It has now been 24 years since OCT was first reported in the journal Science, really in November of 1991. So the next year, 25th anniversary of the description of OCT. Why has OCT been so successful in ophthalmology? Well, number one, the growth of retinal pharmacotherapy for macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy has made it the number one clinical decision-making tool for the retina specialist. It has made the comprehensive ophthalmologist a much better diagnostician. Examination of the macula clinically is very difficult, particularly in eyes with small pupils or cataracts. OCT is easy to interpret and correlates well with ophthalmic pathology. And finally, we can use the OCT to explain to patients what is going on in their eye during treatment for diabetic eye disease for macular degeneration. What are the indications for OCT? Macular symptoms. Every patient that has distortion or metamorphopsia must have an OCT. In fact, there is an argument to be made that every, that OCT should be part of every, every retinal evaluation, including the preoperative evaluation of patients undergoing vitrectomy or retinal detachment surgery. In other words, to give you one example, patients come in, they say, the macula is on. The there is a macula on retinal detachment for which the prognosis is supposed to be better than for macula off retinal detachment. But in many, many of the cases where the, quote, macula is on, when you do an OCT, you see that there is subretinal fluid under the fovea and the macula is off. So every retinal evaluation should include OCT, including preoperative evaluation. Any macular abnormalities on fungus exam. So if you look in, you see blood in the macula, exudate, convolute spot. Every eye with these findings should have an OCT. Diabetic retinopathy. OCT is now, and Dr. Fortune will show you, the number one diagnostic tool for managing diabetic macular edema. Fluorescein angiography is down. OCT is up. Macular degeneration. We can't use a bastin to treat wet macular degeneration without pre and post OCT. Epiretinal membrane. Glaucoma or glaucoma suspect, as Dr. Lee will discuss. Preoperative assessment of the anterior segment surgical patient. I will talk about that in some detail monitoring retinal pharmacotherapy in general, and very important, vision loss of unknown etiology. This is a valuable tool for the neuro-ophthalmologist. Basics, and my focus in this lecture will be very basic. We think of OCT as a clinical decision-making tool, not just a test that we're doing. When you order an OCT, you should have a hypothesis in mind, a clinical diagnosis in mind. Is, does this patient need to be retreated? Does this patient have macular edema? Does this patient have epiretinal membrane? Does this patient have a macula off retinal detachment? You always need to have a question. Because if you just simply do the test, like, well, I did the test because uh, it's a screening OCT. Not very valuable at all. Always, always scan both eyes. Scan the right eye first and the left eye second, always. And the reason is macular disease is frequently symmetrical. And asymmetry may be useful in 
making a diagnosis. And finally, which OCT you use really does not matter. Even using the oldest and most basic OCT, the Stratus, you can make very good clinical decisions. Now, this is the original Stratus machine that we invented. And we looked at only six scans. And it's amazing to me that despite the fact that we didn't scan most of the macula, we could actually make some very good clinical decisions. We no longer do that. We now scan the macula at 50 micron intervals. And we get much more detailed pictures. This is an example of the scanning strategy that was used to create the so-called thickness map. Now, the original thickness maps were, all, were based only on six scans. And we interpolated or filled in the area in between. But I show you the map because the map is the best way to get a very quick assessment of what's going on with the OCT. Because if it's green or yellow, it is basically normal. If it is red or blue, if it's red or white, it's thick. If it's blue, it's thin. We don't think about thin very much with OCT. But in cases of retinal degeneration, retinitis pigmentosa, uh, other forms of geographic atrophy, the, 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 the thickness map will be blue. So look at the thickness map. All OCT, quote, experts, this is what they're looking at at the beginning. And this is a very basic, this is one of the very first diabetic retinopathy OCTs that we did. Now, we can see here now, first of all, you see, the patient has macular edema, swelling, defined by the white, here in, involving the phobia. This scan was made in 1994, 21 years ago. 21 years ago, we had no effective treatment for this, but now we do, and you'll hear about that, which is anti-BEGF treatment. Intensive anti-BEGF treatment is guided by OCT. So that's why OCT is so important. OCT has driven therapeutics. Now, this is the way we're scanning now. We're getting a box scan, usually six by six microns, uh, which is useful to look at. You see the scanning pattern there. <coughs> now, here are the tips about it to determine. Look at the thickness map first. I've already told you that. Look at more than one OCT section. Just don't look at one image and make a, uh, a uh, conclusion, particularly if the thickness map is abnormal. If the thickness map is abnormal, you need to do a much more thorough evaluation. Inspect the smoothest of the internal limiting membrane and look for retinal thickening and look for subretinal fluid. So this is a patient who presented with blurry vision, left eye. <clears throat> and if you look at this patient with the 20 diopter lens and the indirect ophthalmoscope, her macula looks very good. With the 78 diopter lens and the sublamp biomicroscopy, maybe not so good. What's going on? So here's the, the Cirrus machine, the patient being scanned. So first of all, you look at this, and you can see immediately, looking at the thickness map, that it is um, thin. And now we will look at some scans. This is the thickness map, this other left eye. And here, I'm going to show you the five sections that in the Zeiss machine, the Cirrus machine, we look at. So you look at this. What do I see? I see an epigraphal membrane. I see cystic spaces in the interretina. But I also see something else. I see that the outer retina is intact. And the, this margin between the inner, the ISOS junction, is intact, which is consistent with having 20-30 vision.
Good vision comes from the outer retina. This is very simple. Good vision comes from the outer retina. We go, we go down, we see more cysts. Here, we, this is the center. This is the center of the phobia. And we can see now that this patient has a lamellar or partial thickness macular hole with preservation of the outer retina and good vision. Prognosis for this is good. This is, generally speaking, a static condition. And then further down. And further down. So, very simply, we look at this patient, we see her distorted vision, and we can give her a, an evaluation that says, it is likely that this condition will not progress, you do not need surgery, and it's very, very helpful. Now, what about preoperative evaluation of the anterior segment patient surgery? We had wonderful, wonderful session on cataract surgery. But as a retina surgeon, I will tell you this. You can have the, the most elegant lens implant in the world, but if your retina is not doing well, you're not going to see very well. That's what this is about. Macular disease is very common. Pre-existing retinal disease is a common reason for patient unhappiness following cataract surgery, and as I've stressed to you, clinical examination can be misleading. Take a look at this. This is a patient uh, with uh, a distortion left eye, this, so, so this is interesting, you know, distortion in the left eye, okay, said to be due to macular degeneration. See, he's got a few drusen, but that's not really the case. Once again, very simple case. Look at the thickness map. It's yellow and green. It's normal. This is the right eye. And you see that, uh, that he has some drusen. You see at the RPE, he has a few drusen. The interlimiting membrane is relatively smooth. But this is the fellow eye. This is the eye that he's complaining about, okay? He's got, the thickness map is abnormal. Got a little bit of red. You look at the internal limiting membrane. It's wavy. It's rugated. What it means is this patient has an internal limiting membrane. He has an epiretinal membrane. Epiretinal membrane, extremely common. Very, very common. So, at 20-30 vision and distortion, I would not do a cataract operation in this patient. It's unlikely to help them. Now, when I came to Baskin Palmer, Dr. Uh, Alfonso told me that he had a clinic assignment for me. It was the post-cataract unhappiness clinic. He said, don't you have something better? I'm a very famous retina specialist. He said, no, no, this is for you, doctor. But here's, here's my first patient, okay? He's uh, 67, he's very unhappy. You can see that he's taken out the lens of his, uh, uh, the, uh, the lens from his, uh, the right lens from his spectacles. Not, not a good sign. <laughs> Talking about distortion. And this case was from 2005. It's a 10 year old case. And hopefully we've learned something in 10 years. Because this is what his macula looked like. He has an epigrammal membrane, he's got edema, he's unhappy. I'm sure he had this before the cataract operation. So in setting patient expectations, it's going to be a lot better to tell them, ah, we can do this operation, but your distortion will remain. Angiography may not be enough. In fact, angiography may be going away. Dr. Rosenfeld will talk about that. So this patient had a cataract operation, macula looks okay. Uh, here's the angiogram. This is the angiogram uh, of the left eye, and uh, it's normal. That's a normal looking angiogram early and late. I'm not making it, this is not a trick angiogram. And this is the OCT. This is the OCT. This patient has vitreal macular attraction syndrome which now is very widely recognized as a source of macular symptoms. You would never, ever see this if you just did an angiogram. So it's not really that angiography may not be enough now. I think it's OCT first, angiography later. Uh, if you have a time domain scanning strategy, time domain, you know, you really should look at all of these scans. This is the asymptomatic fellow line. Okay, this is the right eye. Remember I said always examine both eyes. And here's why. The, the other eye, let's go back, the other eye, if I had the OCT, we 
which I don't, would be abnormal. So this is a, a patient of mine. He's a, a very well-known stamp collector in blur vision left eye, difficulty seeing road signs. So here's, here's his preoperative OCT. He's got an epiretinal membrane with a central thickness of 322. Now I sent him with this, I said, you see George, Jorge, you have an epiretinal membrane with edema, and I bet that the, if you have the cataract operation, the edema will get worse. So he did have the cataract operation one month post-op. His edema was worse. So he knew what was coming, and we then could treat him with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents to resolve this problem. Now, we're looking at OCT angiography, which will be talked about today. We now have commercial OCT angiography. And this is one of the first cases that we studied two years ago of a patient that has a choroidal neovascular membrane, which you see in figure E. And we now believe, and Dr. Rosenfeld will talk about this this afternoon, about the use of OCT angiography to re replace conventional angiography in diabetes and macular degeneration. Thank you very much for your attention.